Steve Hackett talks about the Genesis solo albums. All the members have all released a lot of albums. But which one, not counting his own, of course, is his favorite? And I was very happy with his reply. It's also my favorite. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Now, remember on this channel, as you know, we clip interviews into different pieces. But guess what? We have another channel where we feature the entire interview. So if you want to see the entire thing, this eighth interview with Steve Hackett, there'll be a link in the description of this video where you can uh, you can check it out. Of all the Genesis solo albums, I'm kind of curious, is there, of, from all the members, is there is there an album that stands out that you like the most? I mean, it's kind of like picking your favorite baby, but... Um, and they're not your babies, they're someone else's music. But is there one that stands out? Or two or three? From all the all the Genesis songs? All the Genesis, all the Genesis, all the Genesis solo albums from the from the members. Oh, from solo albums from all of the members. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, funnily enough, um, many of us really liked Mike Rutherford's first solo album, Small Creeps Day. And you know, the, weird thing, the weird thing is, uh, I phoned him up and I said, yeah, you got it right there. Okay. All right, folks, we didn't, we didn't talk about this. We didn't confer on this. Um, but um, I remember it was Armando Gallo who played me some of that first of all. And I thought, great. And I phoned um, Mike up and he said, um, he said, oh yeah, I didn't like this, this and that about it. He, he wasn't very happy with it. And, um, and I, you know, years later, I, I, I spoke to Chester Thompson and he said, yeah, I love Mike's album. Okay, Chester Thompson, fabulous drummer, working with us. And so I came to realize that everyone who worked on the album told me what was wrong with it. And yet, it was up to us to say what was right about it. So once again, the true owners are not, are not the parents. You know, you create something and you may think, oh, you know, here's, here's my be big, beautiful baby. Or it's, oh, well, you know, it didn't come out perfectly and I wasn't happy and et cetera, et cetera. But I'm saying this till I'm blue in the face. The audience are, the true owners and in the case of small creep today i was part of the audience for that i heard it i was a listener i became a fan this is great stuff i thought really I've, great Mike. Well i've done. interviewed everyone on that album except mike and right. uh, i i uh, um, uh just hold on where is it of course the singer noel mccalla i just talked yes. to him um yeah amazing singer uh david henschel yes. uh 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 who else? Uh, uh, oh, Simon Phillips on drums. I interviewed Simon interview Phillips. Yes, yes, yeah, and and Anthony Phillips on keyboards. Yep, him too. And I thought they were a great band. I have to say, I thought that was, you know, for a band of guys who were coming together, most of whom had not not performed together before. No. Um, I thought it had um, a lot to offer. And, but as I say, when I spoke to the individuals that had been involved. In the main, you know, they, they felt that it, for whatever reason, that it, that it didn't really work. Don't ask me why. Yeah. When I'm saying, you know, I thought it was just really, really, really good, very well produced, great sounds. Um, I liked Noel's voice with it. I liked the keyboard sounds, liked the songs. And, um, uh, but, you know, perhaps it's not surprising you haven't spoken to Mike about it. And um, I suspect because he, you know, he may feel that it's not something he wants to um, uh, be revealing about. Perhaps I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe he'll talk to you about it. Maybe I've never maybe talked to Mike. So I... you know, I think what tends to happen is artists, after a while, you know, they get to hear what people like about something. And, um, you get to review your own sense of. Uh, whether it was a disappointment or not, because, you know, it just becomes part of the past. And so, um, you know, you're no longer having to champion that particular product. And, and it's like, you don't have to get behind the flag of it. It's, 
it's so long ago now. It's just, that, oh, people liked it. Great. Whatever I've done, people like it. Great. You know, that's it. They got it. That's 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 the whole the whole point, you know. Um, Buffy Saint Marie, I met her many years ago. I've been listening to her since I was fourteen or fifteen, and um, she said, "Yeah, we get them when they're young." And uh, she, yeah, very self-effacing. Uh, I thought, God, you know, these beautiful, achingly beautiful love songs and the protest songs and. Um, uh, in a way, she was a little bit like a, like a, uh, the ladies' equivalent of Dylan to me. The protest songs, the uh, the conscience of time and a nation. You know, people don't like this sort of stuff, do they? You know, I've said that today about about Dylan. You know, you know that that, that people were saying. Um, he hates it when anyone introduces him and says, the voice of a generation. He hates all that. He doesn't, he doesn't want to be there, you know. Um, but I, I was thinking, you know, perhaps that's it. But it's it's the conscience um, or to be conscious of the limitations of the era in which you are born and to perhaps reveal it. And, you know, music really did change the world. We'll have more from Steve Hackett in the next two, three days. Keep in mind, if you want to see the entire interview, it's on our sister channel, Rock History Book. There'll be links in the description of this video. Also links to the top Genesis albums, a feature we did a few years ago, and the top 25 Genesis songs, another feature we did maybe four or five years ago. We put a lot of production into it, so check it out. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.